Okay, welcome to our extended DISC webinar today. Um, we're going to be talking about stress management using the extended DISC assessments and understanding the DISC styles. Um, my name is Christina Bowser, and I'm a senior trainer here at Extended DISC, and joining me today is um, Marku Kaupanen, president of Extended DISC North America. Welcome. Hi, Christina. How are you? Um, I'm pretty good. Coming back from vacation, so stress-free. <laughs> always, <laughs> always, right? Um, lying. All right. So um, today's webinar, we will be recording it as usual. Um, and again, uh, with the number of participants and the time slot we have, we won't unfortunately have time for questions. But as always, we encourage your questions in the question section. And after the webinar is over, we promise to follow up with you. So just to start today, um, it's a topic, stress management, that every few years or so, go, uh, every few years or so we like to revisit it because obviously no one has 100% alleviated their stress, right, Marku? That's right. It's always a popular topic. And, and like you said, we want to do it every, every couple of years. And um, one, one of the most attended webinars every time we do it. So... Um, it's going to be fun talking about it. Hopefully, we help some um, of our audience members to get some ideas, not only how to manage their stress better, but also if you're a manager to help with the employees so you can become aware of when they might be feeling stressed and maybe want be time to kind of step in and help that employee so they are in a place that they can be a more productive member of the team uh, again. Exactly. So let's just go ahead and get started, Marku. Well, yeah, let's get started. And, and of course, Stress is part of life. And in fact, if you wouldn't have any stress, we probably wouldn't be very productive. So small, manageable amount of stress is good for us. But often there's so many demands that we have, not only with dealing with chains or other people or surprises. We live in a pretty fast-paced world where we have a lot of high demands. And all of us have, if not now, at least sometime we, t we do feel stress. And again, we're going to talk about today how we can be more self-aware, how to better alleviate and manage stress. Because when we are looking at who we are, we are unique. And depending on a hardwired behavioral style, we will deal with stress differently. And once we have that very confident self-awareness who we are, it becomes a lot easier to take control of the stressful situations, but also how to manage it and again, feel in a place that you are more comfortable. So, but the key here is like with everything we do is that we just need to be very self-aware. And that's what we are here to do with Extended Disc is identify that hard uh, wired disc behavioral style and then see what the implications are in different areas like leadership and sales and customer service, but also when it comes to our stress. Yeah, and I think one of the things we always say is um, regardless of our style, we all feel stress. And when we're under stress, we just don't have that same ability to make those adjustments that we know we should make. So as you and I always say, we tend to become more of who we are. That's right. And I think people tend to often kind of mistakenly think that same things cause stress for everybody. Mm -hmm. And when people you talk, hear me talk about, you know, what causes stress, they talk about it as if everybody is uh, getting stressed in the same situations. And what's stressful for one person can actually be very enjoyable and energizing for somebody exactly. else. And that's some of the things we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. And also... Um, stressors how we show stress is not the same for everyone as well oh it's very different and hopefully we can give you some ideas what those are and and uh, provide some useful information to the audience okay so before marku and i get into um talking about stress management i just want to give you a quick just revisit of what each of the different DIS styles um, are. So remember just D styles, they're very task oriented, they're direct, they're independent, they're impatient. I's are your people oriented style. They never meet a stranger. Everyone is just an opportunity to socialize. So they're optimistic and expressive. S styles are your steady eddies. You know, they want it to work in a proven environment. They're very sincere. They expect the same from others. And C styles are very analytical and more formal and detailed oriented. They work in the um, world of data and facts. So in order, you know, just that with that intro, Marku, let's talk about... Um, Stress management. Yeah, and of course, in our reports, we identify somebody's hardwired this style and how they perceive they need to adjust in many different ways. But I just want to share that diamond, one way of presenting somebody's information. So could you talk a little bit about that? 
So let's talk about Matt and help her understand who he is. Okay. So what you guys are looking at is um, Matt's disk profile. You can see that Matt is in the D quadrant. Um, that's where the arrow is pointing, and we know he is a dominant D. Um, we can also see the arrow, and the arrow is actually not in the D quadrant. It's, it's actually pointing in the um, I quadrant. And I know that people ask a lot about the arrows, about you know, directions, about the length of the arrows. Mark, who can you talk about that? Well, first of all, what the arrow really shows us is how Matt perceives that he needs to modify his behavioral style in his present work environment. Mm -hmm. And essentially, longer the arrow, greater perceived need there is, there is to adjust, meaning that more energy, more effort it will take. Now, that's kind of a global modification that Matt is making. But if somebody has to modify their behavior very significantly for a longer period of time, that also is good to remember that that could create stress because let's say if you are a D star like Matt, if you have to be something that you're not quite comfortable, you, you know, you have to be somebody else. And if you have to do that very, uh, like I said, for a long period of time, it can take its toll and it can create pressure and can create stress. But this is one way to kind of think about our stress in terms of who we are and how we need to modify our behavior. Yeah, I always say with these arrows, for whatever reason, Matt is thinking he needs to push himself outside of his comfort zone. And when we're outside of our comfort zone, we typically feel uncertain or pressured. So it's just an indicator. We don't know for a fact, but you know, when you see this or if Matt were to look at it on his own report, you might want to ask yourself, what is causing that type of adjustment or that perceived need to adjust? You know, also think about actually, is that kind of a modification in behavior going to create success? Because sometimes we may have not the right idea what actually will create success for us. And if I'm Matt's manager, I may also want to look at that and have a conversation with Matt. Maybe it's one of those coachable moments and really discuss and be very specific about, hey, Matt, these are the kind of behaviors that will make you successful here. Exactly. So um, why don't we first start off talking about each of the disc styles and how they manage and how they show stress, Marku? Yeah, like I mentioned, that it's it's important to remember that who we are impacts everything. It's how we do things and also how we deal with stress. And again, it's not the right way to think about it, that what causes stress for all of us, they are the same. So if you're talking about these thoughts because they like independence and stability and they want to be control, if you take those kind of things away from their environment, they will become stress. So when they feel that they don't have ability to make independent decisions, somebody's, let's say, micromanaging them or there's a lot of structure, that is not comfortable for these styles. And then they begin, like all of us, when we are under stressful situations, we actually begin to amplify our strengths. We become too much of who we actually are. So like these styles, for example, they tend to be assertive and direct. Well, when they're under stress, they actually become aggressive and they become demanding and, and very impatient with others. They're impatient to begin with, but under pressure, they become even more so. Right, and I think what's, important to recognize when we talk about these signs of stress, um, this person, D style person may not ob observe these own, these signs of stress in themselves, but this is the behaviors that tend to come across to other people who are witnessing their behaviors. Absolutely. Like often we talk about that strong emotions are the enemy of behavioral modification. When we have a lot of stress, it becomes more and more difficult for us to really remain calm, present, and mindful about how to modify behavior with different interactions. So when we're under stress, it becomes more and more difficult for us to modify behavior, and we are not even aware of that. And of course, when we are doing that, guess what happens to our interaction with other people, my team members? They are not going to be as, as productive. They're not going to be as effective. They're not going to be as pleasurable. And in fact, I'm actually kind of throwing more fuel to fire, and I'm becoming more stressed. So that's why that self-awareness is so important. That vicious cycle. Yeah, so for the D styles, what you want to do is you provide them independence and as much as possible, allow them to make their own decisions and act very independently. If you are able to do that, I realize it's not always possible, but as much as you can, that will make D much more comfortable and will, re will reduce his or her stress level. Okay, so just quick overview of Ds. Let's talk about I's, Marku. Yeah, I styles, of course, we know they're all about interactions with others. And if you take away those abilities, interact with other people, they will begin to feel stress. And they begin to feel like, I don't have influence anymore. I'm on mm -hmm. the sidelines. I'm not in the spotlight anymore. And um, 
that maybe kind of also one thing is that if you provide them too much routine because they want a lot of variety, that's uncomfortable for eye style and they begin to feel stress. And when they are under stress, they really, again, become too much of themselves. They become too eye-like in this example or these situations. They want to get attention from every, every everywhere. So if you think about like some of these, um, like Jim Carrey, for example, if imagine him being sidelined and not getting attention, what is he going to do? He's going to jump up and down and he wants that attention again. So that's what I stars tend to do when they are under stress. Those are the kind of things you want to look for. And they also tend to begin to have very emotional views and opinions about everything. They want that attention. They want to in essentially provoke other people so they get that attention again. Even rebelliously. Rebelliously as well. So what you need to do with eye styles is very simple. Give them opportunity to interact with others. Make sure they feel included. Make sure that they have opportunities to express themselves again. And that will make them again more comfortable and the stress level is reduced. Exactly. And as Marku said, it's not always the, you, we don't always have that ability, but understanding that these are stress relievers for the eye cell can help um, as a manager as well as the individual. Yeah. And at one point it's like, if you are a manager, you you will have different styles of employees. And we sometimes tend to think what's good for me is be good for all my employees. So let's say you are happen to be a low eye style, for example, but you have an eye style employee. Well, you see that, hey, this person seems to be under stress. And sometimes the manager mistakenly essentially makes the situation by worse. But like, okay, let me give you more direction. Let's, I'm going to leave you alone so yeah. you can be <laughs> more comfortable. And that's exact opposite that you should be right. doing in that situation. So again, it's about self-awareness, not only who we are, but how we need to modify our behavior to our different styles of employees if we want to help to make uh, sure that em our employees feel less stress so they can be more productive. Exactly. All right. How about, um, let's talk about the S-style. Well, S-styles, they want predictability. They, they like routines. They want to understand kind of step by step what's going to happen. They are most comfortable when they're driving or commuting to work and they know what kind of day they have ahead of them. If they don't know what's going to be happening, they're going to feel pressure, stress, and so on. So unexpected changes and kind of unpredictable, unstructured situation will cause estal stress. And when that happens, one thing we need to remember is that they might become overcautious, but just like with the estals, they are, while they are people-oriented, they are not as expressive with this, their feelings. So for others, it's sometimes very difficult to see these signs of stress. With S-styles, it's most difficult to see when they're under stress. So we need to be very uh, focused and we need to really pay, pay careful attention. But one way to find if s style is under stress is that they tend to either become very withdrawn, mm -hmm. they almost like disappear, they're under the radar, mm -hmm. or they become almost D-like. They begin to defend certain viewpoints or principles very strongly and others around them, you know, where is this behavior coming from? Usually they're so calm and laid back, but if s -style is under stress, they can become very D-like, almost assertive, almost aggressive, mm -hmm. even blunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say with the S styles, you know, they, they are the emotional style, just like the I style. But unlike the I style, their emotions tend to stay below the surface until, you know, it, it just can't stop from coming up. So they either shut down mm -hmm. or, as Marku said, it all comes out, they become like in your face. Yeah, they in internalize their feelings, so it, it's difficult for others to see what's mm -hmm. happening. But when they get, they have reached that boiling point, so to speak, they can actually explode and others around them are going to be extremely surprised. So what you need to do is to alleviate stress is make sure you create as predictable environment as possible. Show them what's going to happen. Talk about what's going to happen, how we need to work step by step, step and that will make them feel more comfortable. And also have conversation with them one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It has to be very sincere conversations because if you're not sincere, Estal is not going to like that. And again, that could actually cause even more stress. So sincere one-on-one -on -one conversation with the manager will help and make sure you provide step-by-step -step what's going to happen next. Exactly. So build that rapport. The more they trust you, the more comfortable they'll be. Um, okay, so let's talk about C. C style is the one we have left. And of course, they like information. They like details because they want to make sure everything is done correctly. So if there is lack of information and they don't really understand specifically why we are doing something, that will cause them stress. 
uh, conflicts with others, you know, conflicts are inve inevitable for us, can't speak. <laughs> they will happen, <laughs> but uh, uh, that makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's all about the information because they want to make sure they don't make mistakes. And when they are under stress, and if the information is not available, they begin to question everything and they be looking for the information everywhere possible. And they may also, like Estelle, become a little bit withdrawn and talk even less. Mm -hmm. And they may become very pessimistic with their worldview. They may fear the worst because I don't have the details, the information. It's going to fail because I can't do it correctly. Yeah, they're like the negative Nellies. The other thing I say about C styles when they're under stress is I jokingly say they go into analysis paralysis. They're so focused on making sure everything is correct and all the details are lined up. They really just can't move in any direction. Yeah, they begin to look for information everywhere. Mm -hmm. Google is their friend, so they begin to Google things mm -hmm. and find out what they can. And the way to alleviate the stress is to try to provide the information. But of course, we have situations when the information is not available. We entering some new area, for example. But even then, you can tell the C-style, Hey, the information I have is that we don't have available information. Even that will make it more comfortable, the sea style, and that will alleviate stress. Yeah, the clearer um, they know about what's coming up, the less stress they'll feel. So let's talk about, Marku, how we um, can actually use the DISC assessment in stress management. Well, so far we have kind of talked about the big picture. You know, we're talking about the D, I, S, and C. But of course, we are all very unique individuals, and we are all combination of these four styles. So, with our extended this assessment platform, and somebody completes a questionnaire, they typically get one report first. It could be leadership assessment, or maybe a sales assessment, mm -hmm. and so on. But once they completed that questionnaire one time, our clients can log into their admin portal. And they can reprocess the information in different ways. And one way would be to get a report about stress management. And um, I think we're going to share a little bit about that kind of a report today. But the good thing to remember here is to keep our stress level low is that you don't have to pay any additional for those reports. <laughs> you can reorder them at no additional cost. So kind of you to keep our stress level low. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about the different sections of the report. I see we have first the causes of stress. Yeah, so and again, these reports can be tailored, but when we look at these uh, bar graphs, well, actually, I'll actually talk about the bar graphs, how you interpret those. Okay, so when you look at these bar graphs, and they're, you know, it may be the topic causes of stress, it may be other topics, but they're read the same way. Basically, you have a behavior, and each behavior corresponds to a bar graph, and that box that covers one um, number on the bar graph, it's not about... Um, good or bad or better or worse. They're just simply indicators of how much energy it takes for someone with your natural style. So the boxes are your natural style and where they fall in the spectrum for that particular corresponding behavior. So like if here, if you get a four or five, that tends to be a higher factor for stress. Mm -hmm. So if, for, for example, this person in ability to influence people, it tells me that this person is probably a fairly high eye style. If they don't have ability to do so, they begin to feel stress. So when you're fours and fives, that means that these are the higher triggers for stress, if you will. So um, how about signs of stress? So we have causes, but also how do our stress show up? Yeah, it's just like we talked about need to be self-aware of what causes our stress. I think it's very important that for us to be particularly aware of when we begin to exhibit signs of stress. And as you mentioned earlier, when we are under stress, we begin to it becomes more difficult for us to be self-aware. So that's why this is even particularly important. But when you look at the bar graph, same way, if you get in fours and fives, these are very likely signs of stress. And again, here, it's important to remember that who we are in terms of our differences, we exhibit our stresses differently. So if I'm a manager, I need to be very aware that my different employees, because of their different behavioral styles, we so show completely different signs. And when I'm aware of that and I'm paying attention to, it, to, to that thing, I can make sure that I am in control of, hey, I want to be looking at what kind of stress levels we have in our team so I can make some changes, help our employees to manage that. Because if they are under a lot of stress, they're not going to be productive team members. Yeah. And what I like about this report is that not all signs of stress are going to show up in each person. You can see there are certain signs of stress that are 
likely to show up and there's are certain signs of stress that are unlikely to show up in this person but may show up in another person with a different disc style. Um, the other thing I also like is it's not just about showing your stress levels and how it shows up, but it also has those action-oriented steps. You can see some of the questions at the bottom. You know, once you understand your signs of stress, what are some of the simple steps you can take to alleviate them? Absolutely. Um, and then, I'm sorry, now, of course, we're going to show more specifically to each unique individuals how they tend to react to stressful situations. So here I look at it two ways. One, if I'm the person, I'm looking at my own report. Again, I want to have that very clear reminder of how I tend to react. And then, because the only thing I can control is my behavior, when I begin to realize that, hey, I must be feeling this stress. I mean, typically we kind of know, we feel uncomfortable. But here we begin to think about how we actually begin to behave. And these ten types of behaviors typically are not as productive. So I can stop and maybe take a little breather and begin to modify my behavior again. Then if I'm a manager, if I'm able to get access to this information, because typically our clients share it, is that then I can begin to, again, be more keenly aware when the person might be under pressure so I can make some changes to try to impact the situation. Yeah, and just remember when you or your client are reading these lists, um, they're based on your natural hardwired style, but what they don't factor in is, you know, your experience or your current situation. So not all of these, I always say, don't think of every one of these as going to be a trigger or uh, your automatic reaction to stress, but you want to highlight the ones that do resonate with you that you want to actually focus on, and that way you can do something about it. That's right. It's all about self-awareness and taking control. Which takes us to the next section in the report. Oh, alleviating stress. Of course, there we want to get here. Now, I know I'm stressed, so what do I, What can I do? So this will provide very specific information about what will alleviate stress. And it will re really will highlight that those kind of factors that help us reduce stress are very different. So like for this six individual, for example, if we look at the possibility to talk about the problem from a different angles, that is something that makes this person more comfortable. So again, I think we have somebody who is probably more of an ID style, and they want to have a conversation about this, and that makes them feel more comfortable and feeling in control again. But it could be something else like write down clearly what you expect from this person. Well, this actually would make me more stressful, <laughs> if, if it, like, something like this. So here it's again so important for the manager to realize that what they need to do differently with different kind of employees. Because let's say I'm a manager who happens to be a low eye. I tend to prefer to get specific information and kind of a step-by-step. -step. But I may mistakenly assume that all of my employees want that as well. So here I would be aware that when I'm, de when I'm interacting with Monica and I want to help her take control of her stress level, that is something I want to stay away from. Yeah, just remember what may alleviate your stress could cause stress for that employee. Yes, and let's talk about that since uh, you brought it up, kind of at a big level for the different these styles. What helps us manage stress? And again, when we talked about the D styles, they want that independence and control. So obviously, we just need to and keep it simple is that we provide them as much control and independence as possible. And for I styles, again, they all about people. They want that spotlight. They want to have conversations. So give them opportunity to work with others, bring them into teams, bring them into meetings as much as possible. Make sure that they feel that they have some influence about how they interact with others. And then when you talk about S styles, S styles, they crave that security and stability. They need to feel like they're in a environment that doesn't have a lot of unpredictability because that's a stressor for them. So when it comes to managing stress, you want to provide as much information and relationship and rapport as possible. With the C style, um, tell them what they need to know. They want as much information as possible. So whether you put it in writing or you tell them up front what their expectations are, you want to give them guidelines and instructions, um, that will help the C-style alleviate their stress. Yeah, and if you have the information, like I said, if you don't have it available, even let them know. We just don't have the information. Even that helps. If you have the information, please don't keep it to yourself. Share it with the C-style. Exactly. Now, one other thing is help me kind of th think about this is helping others to, with their stresses, to think about what tends to be what I call their predominant question. Like these styles tend to ask a lot of what questions. Mm -hmm. What's the bottom line? What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you ask those what questions. And I think you often bring it up that when we are under pressure, 
we tend to ask these questions even more. Right. We probably, you know, the the C is going to be like, why, 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 why? And you have to understand that, you know, when they're under pressure, they need that information. Yeah. So know that the Ds, they're looking for those what answers, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry, answers to those what questions. And I, of course, they're about people. Tell them who's going to be involved. Tell about all the different parts of the organization that will be on in the project, who their team members are, mm -hmm. and that will uh, help them to kind of take control of their stress level. And for the SS, because they want that predictability, mm -hmm. they want that plan. So answer the how questions. This is how we are going to do. This is how I would like you to do this. If you make sure that you provide the answers to that how questions, SS will feel a whole lot more comfortable. Well, I think, um, again, we don't have all the answers. Stress is so many things to so many people. But hopefully what we helped you answer today was how to tie, you know, a person's distyle um, to stress and how it shows up is different, how we alleviate stress is different for different styles. Um, anything you want to add, Marco? Well, again, like we talk about at the outset of this webinar, we all experience stress and, and all we, we all want to make sure that we reduce our stress levels. And it's all about self-awareness. When I'm more keenly aware and have that confident self-awareness when it comes to my stress levels mm -hmm. and how I tend to exhibit stress, but also how I need to, can alleviate stress, when I realize that I'm a unique individual and I need to think about that from a, that specific angle and what are the specific ways I can take control, that's really what it's all about. Yeah, it's just like, as Marku had said in earlier webinars, it's a roadmap. It just gives us in more information about ourselves and when, which we can think about how we tend to show up, how we show up under stress. And then it takes us to that next step. What can we do differently? What, you know, can we proactively manage and practice something differently so that when that stress comes up? Yeah, and again, when we talk about this uh, assessment is that typically people don't start with a stress management report. Mm -hmm. They may have a leadership development program and they get the leadership assessment. But when, when you provide this kind of information to your employees about, okay, here's a report for about your stress uh, and your disk style, how those two interrelate, you do two things. One is you help them manage stress. But second is you reinforce that kind of behavioral style model because ultimately it always comes down to understanding that people are different, understanding who we are, learning to identify the styles of other people, and the fourth most important step, how do I modify my behavior? Even here, it's about modification of behavior. Exactly. So, all right. Well, thank you, Marku. Uh, we have another webinar coming up um, next Wednesday, and it's also related to stress management. It's based. It's focusing on time management, right? Yeah, we'll be talking about how our hardware behavioral style will impact our time management because it's going to play a role there as well. And. I haven't met many individuals who say that they could not manage their time better. So I think it's going to be another popular topic. Exactly. So how do they find out about that? Go to our website, extendedthis.org, and um, click on the events tab, which is on the top of the screen. And you can register to not only the time management session or webinars, you say, but there's a lot of webinars coming. So just register those. Even if you can't attend, you will get the recording. So uh, make sure you visit that website. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you next time.